you know, time and time again, when I have the fortune of sitting with one of our special guests, who by the left Indian made a mark, but have contributed something outside of India, I learned so much about me, but I also learned so much about my culture. Today, my special guest is Adit Agarwal, who's an Indian-born U.S.-based engineer and entrepreneur and the owner of several businesses, including Alco Eats. Growing up in India, Adit was often bullied throughout his childhood for his struggle with obesity. Now he's sharing his journey to health with ready-made Indian food for all. Raised in Raipur, India, Adit wants to provide the ability to create restaurant-worthy dishes of Southeast Asia in their own kitchens without the time spent doing it from scratch. Boy, I love that. When Adit is not working with his team to craft excellent quality Indian food, he loves to explore innovative innovations in technology. He loves reading, architecture, jiu-jitsu, boxing, and traveling to new places. So I can't wait to get right into your journey. Bullying has never been a good feeling for any of us. I remember once a girl put bubble gum in my hair, and that was an awful experience, you know. And Adit, you've been bullied, and you, it had such a devastating and lasting effect on, on you. How were you able to turn that around into something positive and make some healthy lifestyle changes as a young adult? Thank you for having me, Sister Jenna. And uh, yeah, I totally uh, agree that bullying definitely does have a lasting impact on anyone, whether it be adult or child, especially kids at that age, because we are uh, we are growing up and you know we are aware of our surroundings so much, and we kind of are in the phase of learning that once something like this happens, it kind kind of uh, makes you into something else. It kind of uh, gives you an experience it kind of makes you bolder so it it is it is an experience that either a person can learn from and you know kind of become more strong and be ready or prepared to deal with it or kind of you know take it in a way and be demoralized and go the other way so mm -hmm. at least from my experience i figured figured out a way to kind of nurture me to become a stronger person. So that did you was remember, kind of... Did you remember when we were young and it was like, you never know what to do. I remember this girl wanted to meet me after school and just beat me up. And, you know, knowing how nerdy I was when I was younger, you know, I met her outside of school and I says, okay, just finish what you want to do. Just beat me up and get it over with. <laughs> just close my mm -hmm. eyes. And she yeah. couldn't hit me. She just couldn't hit me <laughs> because it was like I wasn't, you know, attacking her. But I remembered yeah. the enormous fear and discomfort you felt. Did you ever feel that too? Absolutely. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's terrifying because growing up, I uh, I was in a boarding school. so. You have to live and breathe the same, you know, surroundings and, you know, kind of have to stay in the same dorm rooms with these bullies. So you kind of fear that at night something could happen. You know, they might just barge in and they could bully you again. So it was a very terrifying experience for sure. And mm. uh, I, t I can totally relate with you that it's just, uh, you know, you just get into that zone where you're constantly in the fear of getting bullied. So yeah. uh, it yeah, is, just, it's, a, it's crazy to think of. I just don't know what is inside of um, a child when, but I know they've been bullied or maybe mm -hmm. they're just not being treated with a lot of love that they do that. Anyway, we're going to move on yeah. to some happier stories. What was, yeah, the real, sure. what was the real inspiration that actually got you to start your own mm -hmm. business producing healthy Indian foods? Yeah. So, uh, as a kid, I, you know, I was a really, really obese kid. You know, it's kind of, a, I did not, I wasn't conscious of myself and I wasn't really self-aware of what I was doing with my life. Uh, to be completely honest with you, Sister Jenna, I didn't know what uh, life was for me mm -hmm. as a person. As a kid, I was still trying to figure out what I needed to do in order to find meaning for myself. and I constantly uh it, and it's completely 100 percent my fault I, I have absolutely nothing to blame this on bullies or 
anyone else. It was me who kind of did this to myself and I just ate a lot and, you know, kind of uh, did not care, you know, about other people, myself, and I wasn't aware of it, you know, what I was doing in reality. So that kind of switched when I got the opportunity uh, to kind of visit America and uh, get education over there. So I, I'm educated from uh, Kettering University, Flint, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And over there, you kind of have to, so if you if you look at India here, you get everything on a silver platter. If you're in boarding school, you know, you have people cook for you. It's like every kid goes there or she eats, you know, well, goes to bed. Everything is folded for you. You know, everything's done well. So you kind of do not get an appreciation for these little things. And when I got the opportunity to come here in America, it was uh, something that uh, I felt I had to do everything. And, you know, suddenly I had appreciation for every single thing in my life. So it was like a profound moment where I kind of realized that I have to be something. I have to be someone. I need to realize uh, what my purpose is in life. I need to, you know, be more. So that was kind of uh, a self-awareness moment that I kind of felt after uh, coming here so that was definitely the trigger point it's so beautiful you know how many stories i've heard of indians when they come to america how the world becomes your oyster and there is something so powerful in being able to stand on your own two feet and i'm not saying that the family roots and, and and culture that we also have where everyone is just there for you but sometimes it's very crippling because you don't yep. ever feel like you have the courage to do anything on your own. And mm-hmm. you never know how to think on your own if you needed to. And so you rely so much on sometimes family with a sense of your personal sense of loss of identity. So I get that. Mm-hmm. I get that very much. Now, some Indian foods tend to really mm-hmm. use a lot of heavy butter, dairy, and yeah. sugar. And I'll tell you this. Being half Indian, half Indian, yeah. and half Caribbean, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to move away from that Indian food because I says, I can't eat this food. Why would they have jalebi? Gulab jamun? Oh, my God, that's <laughs> going to kill you. And it was like I would, you know, here I am in my community, and everybody eats mm-hmm. only these things, and I struggle yeah. with that. How mm-hmm. are your products different from the regular Indian food? So, uh, the, so I, just to put it out there, I do love eating, you know, really, really authentic and really, you know, heavy butter, the ghee and, you know, all that good food, you know, it's, it's delicious. But, you know, at the same time, I have to think about health, right? So what, what we kind of figured out here at Alco Eats is that, you know, you have to take a middle ground where, you know, people should enjoy really tasty food really delicious Indian food and they should have the opportunity to eat it on a consistent and daily basis. So what we did was we kind of took away all the unhealthy fats from it and we kind of used nuts, so cashews, to make it creamier and really velvety. So we added cashews and took away the ghee, the butter and all of that good stuff from our products. So now when you kind of make a gravy, which is you just mix it in water, simmer it for 10 minutes, and you have a really authentic, really delicious, velvety Indian curry made in a couple of minutes. And it's really healthy. So I eat it on a daily basis and I am so satisfied. It's just like a like an experience. It just takes me back to my childhood eating, you know, all those uh, awesome, uh, delicious delicacies on a daily basis. I can't wait to try so, it. Now, now, for example, I don't eat garlic and onions. Do you have garlic and mm-hmm. onions in your ingredients of some of your stuff? We do have for some, but we do have uh, products uh, that are without onion and garlic as well. And in mm-hmm. those products, which we don't, uh, we do provide an option to add it separately. So, okay. yeah, we do have, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we oh, do good. have products getting, like that. Yeah. I'm getting hungry just talking to you. So, um, so many people, you know, worldwide are said to be obese, especially in the United States Mm -hmm. of America. I think it ranks one in the top 10. What advice Mm -hmm. would you offer others who may be struggling with obesity? And why do some people find it so difficult to follow a diet? Mm -hmm. 
I think it's uh, it's more about uh, you know there, so there this might be a uh, it, this is a very tricky question, Sister Jenna. But if you kind of break it down into you know small chunks, you can have different groups of people doing different things, and we can kind of uh, break it down into the root cause of it. Some people start a diet because of like a social pressure of some sort that they need to do this in order to be accepted in society. Mm -hmm. Some people follow a diet because they might actually genuinely want to, but they do not have enough motivation or discipline to continue it. Or they might do it just because they are being forced by family or they want to look a certain way. So these are reasons why people start something. But in order to finish something and actually reach a goal, there's a totally different story. You need to actually have the discipline and the willpower to, you know, get through. And that's when you kind of have to go deep what the trigger points are for you that are going to uh, lead you to crash on your diet. Because if you start, so let's say you were born in a certain year, 10 years or 20 years of your life, you have been eating all those delicious foods and, you know, all the unhealthy ingredients and suddenly you go on a diet, right? You form those habits of eating unhealthy foods and you cannot break those habits in one uh, one click. So you have to kind of maintain and you have to be reasonable about it yeah. at the same time. So that would be my suggestion to everyone is uh, be reasonable with it. You know, it's okay to eat, uh, you know, unhealthy foods once in a while. Have a couple of cheat days in the beginning. You know, follow a consistent diet. But, you know, you tell yourself that if you follow a diet for maybe one or two days strictly, the third day, you you reward yourself with those foods that you actually love eating. So kind of take it slow in the beginning so you don't That's crash. Cool. So it's yeah. like getting in your reps before, you know, start, start to actually run a marathon straight away. Kind yeah, of it makes sense. It makes sense. I don't know what the climate now is in India, but in mm -hmm. America, we're so saturated with quick fixes and instant gratification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're watching a movie and here comes Domino's Pizza and in 10 minutes it's at your yeah. door. <laughs> and I yeah. think one of the reasons why we struggle with maintaining our diet is that mm -hmm. we've been so conditioned to think if it doesn't happen for me fast or quick, forget it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when it comes on to our health and well-being, no, no. Mm -hmm. I went on I went on the juicing diet, Edith, and mm -hmm. I remembered many, many years I get, kept saying, I know juicing is good for you. I know it is, but I love <laughs> food. And one mm -hmm. morning I woke up and I just started juicing for three and a half months. Kale, banana, apple, mm -hmm. ginger. And I had only one meal per day. Me and my brother did it for three and a half months and I was wow. at a conference and mm -hmm. they looked they made the most delicious looking pizza and mm -hmm. I devoured that pizza that night <laughs> and on the way back to my room I was walking with my brother and I said I feel so heavy and he says yeah, yeah me too and then we had realized how mm -hmm. much we were taking care of our body one and then second yeah. thing we realized how much food has an impact mm. on your well-being. You have said that health is something that we need for the progression mm -hmm. of our civilization. I agree yeah. with you. What have you discovered about the need, though, for healthy living? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the basic, well, I, th I do feel uh, food has the power to provide us how we feel. So, for example, it gives us energy, right? But there's like you're already aware of like different sorts of energy. So the foods that we eat gives us direct energy in a positive way or a negative way for us to function on a daily basis. For example, if you kind of eat healthy foods that you are accustomed to eating that you know is going to make you feel better, it's a positive, uh, it has a positive effect on you. Therefore, you feel better. You kind of when you talk to someone or you are doing some sort of project or work or you're just conversing with anything, you kind of give out positive vibes. You give out positive energy. When you feel lethargic, when you've eaten something bad, maybe like really, really heavy food, you kind of feel low and you're all squashed up and you want to go to bed and you don't want to work or do anything. So it's kind of giving you that negative tone or negative connotation. It kind of that's what you relate to the other person that you kind of uh, dealing with. So I do think that what you eat is what you become. 
And that's how mm-hmm. you kind of spread energy in the world as well. So if you constantly eat something that is going to make you better, that is going to give, give out positive vibes, positive mm-hmm. energy, it's going to help our civilization at large. That's beautiful. It's like you become what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. You, yeah, you become what you eat. And what you think has a lot to do with the choices of the food that you eat. Mm-hmm. So both are very absolutely. much interconnected. Do you have any new products on the horizon? Yeah, we do. We do. So what we did was we had this uh, instant gravy mixes that we kind of came up with and it's all natural. But the, because cashew was such an important ingredient in our gravies, we thought that what if we, because cashews are really healthy, not, you know, so we thought, why not just flavor the cashews so people can also snack healthy on them? So we came out with savory flavors and sweet flavors. This is the first time that actually I'm reviewing that as well so i'm super excited for people to try a healthy snack you know and they can eat it it's wholesome so when you eat you know a couple of cashews you feel full at the same time you don't Mm. feel lethargic so instead of chips or something you know it's good to eat something healthy yeah congratulations on that and what's the name of the 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 product the 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 special cashew is it has a special name we yeah we call it funny nuts <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. So it's called so, yeah. so it's called funny nuts from Al Al Alco Eats. Alco Eats. Yep. Oh, wonderful, yep. wonderful! I love that. Yeah, we kind of wanted to make it fun, you know, so people, you know, just enjoy eating it. Friends, family, you know, if they're alone doing something, you know, they have the power to eat healthy. And enjoy oh my it. goodness, I'm seeing this commercial playing out in my brain where everybody in the living room is just laughing. Oh, funny nuts, yeah. funny nuts. Are you funny? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah, I'm super excited for it. <laughs> well, congratulations for that. Um, Adit, is there anything else that you'd like us to know about, you know, the way we need to care more for ourselves inside out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's definitely important i i truly believe this it is really important to take care of yourself it's really it's even more important to love yourself for who you are you know and do that on a consistent basis because if you have the power to love yourself i can assure people anyone who i'm speaking with that you are going to give out positive energy and in turn you will be able to love the person in front of you or who they are so Mm. please please take care of yourself that would be my uh one advice to everyone that's beautiful what inspires you still i think uh something that inspires me is my past you know for the person who i was you know it can it's something that i was and i've already experienced it and I don't want to be that person anymore because I know how dark that is, you know, how how it made me feel, how it made others feel around me. So that is the inspiration that kind of constantly drives me to go forward. So it might be a cliche that, okay, he was something in the past, you know, he changed, but inspiration can come from either someone really, really important in your life or, you know, something really positive or you can be inspired from a negative thing that you don't want to become at all. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I do, you know, go towards is that Mm -hmm. I want to be better every day. I want people who are with me, who work with me, who I hang out with to be better each day. They don't have to do, you know, a stretch at a time that, okay, they are, you know, certain thing right now and they suddenly become, you know, world's best thing. But till the time they are, you know, slowly crawling towards their goals, that is important to me, is moving forward. That's beautiful. And tell us something about yourself that nobody knows, but you would like them to know. Hmm. That is, that is interesting. So, so for me, uh, People don't know that uh, I still hide cashews in my desk drawer. <laughs> and when when I'm alone and I'm kind of thinking or imagining stuff, 
you know, to what next we could do and how we could improve. I do snack on the chocolate espresso cashews to get me that kick going. I mean, it's funny, but, you know, it's something I do, you know, I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where funny nuts. That's where funny nuts must have come from, too. No, you never know. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it it is it is funny, but you know, it's something that I enjoy doing, and it's been a secret because you know it, it was a thing where you know we get we kind of uh, devised this whole recipe for the cashews, and you know, suddenly we we noticed that uh, people who who were making the cashews, we kind of uh, started eating pounds of it because it was so <laughs> delicious. So what we did was we compartmentalized it into small bags and, you know, we started uh, doing that so that we don't get, you know, obese at the same time, eating pounds <laughs> of it. So we well, do you know, little bags. You know what I'm going to do? I promise you when I come to your office, I'm going to sneak in your drawer and take some of your cashews. <laughs> 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 oh, for sure. You will find lots of it, for sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Adit. It's been a delight to have you. Leave us with a website where we can find more information about you and your products. Yeah, so uh, you, can, uh, you can find us at www.alcoeats.com, and we are also available on Amazon. Beautiful. Thank you so much for making us healthier, and thank you for maintaining the courage to Feel healthy for you, not necessarily feeling you have to prove to the world that your body looks good or not, and you're not body shaming anyone. But the fact that when you start to not feel so good with yourself, then you know there has to be some internal as well as external work. So thank you for making us healthy, and I can't wait to dive into some of your funny nuts. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jenna. It was a pleasure you. meeting you. Same here. Same here, to be continued. All right, folks, so we've now learned a little bit about Alco Eats, and we can't wait to get our hands on those funny nuts so we can make us start being funny and laugh. We need so much more humor in our lives now. Things are so serious and rough, and you know, you know how that goes. Eat healthy, and you'll be much happier. I like what Edith said. You know, if you become healthier, it's like civilization is progressing. Give that some thought how powerful that is. The more you take care of your health internally and externally, you are adding to the evolving of society. Let that land on you today. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And I'm suspecting that we're all here to love each other the same. Take care. Be happy. Meditation intimate experiences with the divine through contemplative practices my new book that is out on amazon barnes and noble and you can get it from sacred stories publishing or on america meditating radio the quieter you become the more you're able to hear one of my opening pages of this book i have heard time and time again that when you go into the stories and the narratives of the 37 authors that are sharing with you their mystical experiences of the divine something in you changes it has already reached number one three times in mysticism category and the new age category for new releases i want you to get a copy for yourself and tell me what you feel as a result of closing that final page of this book meditation intimate experiences with the divine through contemplative practices. It's calling you. Can you hear it?